Hey guys, so there's been a lot of debate over why G-Dragon was smirking while he was entering and exiting the police station during his voluntary appearance to be questioned by police in the latest drug scandal that has encompassed Korea and the world of celebrities, the world of business conglomerates, the seedy underground of the VIP ladies of the night establishments, all of that came to a real focal point when GD showed up at the police station to go into a four hour questioning. People were like, why is he smirking? Or yeah, that he is showing confidence because he's innocent and he's done nothing wrong. Or other people are like, well, he you know doesn't seem very apologetic. And other people are like, apologetic for what? Well, now I think I know why he was smirking. But before we get into that, let's go over, you know, what questions were asked of him when he went into the police station and what questions were asked of him when he exited the police station and, you know, like all the shade he was throwing. So first of all, he pulls up in his BMW, and I guess it's not some ordinary BMW. I don't even know what model this is, but it's probably like the most expensive one. Apparently it's like 200,000 or $300,000. And people are saying like, he immediately threw shade at BMW because BMW either officially dropped him as a brand ambassador or was just distancing themselves from uh, a previous uh, sponsorship that he did for uh, BMW as part of like their big old like, you know, culture series where they got a lot of celebrities and they, you know, had these sort of like big promotional campaigns and even like concerts and stuff. That was like one shade. So like anything like with like GD, I think is very well thought out. It has a message and especially with like, I think a celebrity of his caliber, there's a lot that he can't actually say that he wants to say. And so a lot of it gets coded in symbols and images, which is essentially he leans to as an artist anyway. So that was one big shade. Second one is his hair. You know, he's usually known for like, you know, the kind of wild fashion trend setting uh, appearance, especially with the hair. But with these types of situations, when you go in for uh, drug investigation and they're going to test your hair, what he's signaling is that he didn't cut his hair. It's long. It's long enough where basically like if there's evidence stored of drug use in your hair, he's going to give as much, you know, of a long timeline as possible and a signal that he didn't dye it. Although honestly, I don't know, like, you know, when's the last time he really had like his natural hair color. But anyway, it's at least it indicates that, oh, I didn't dye it. But in this case, it probably like, you know, dyed it natural color, but who knows? And that it was yeah long and that it's it's natural color so that he is making a, a gesture saying that i am going to comply fully with this investigation and try not to manipulate anything so when he did come out he did say that the drug test the quick reagent test was negative and then the full uh, drug test uh, is going to come out after it's uh, been sent to the lab and he hoped that it was fast. All right. So he goes into the station. There's like two reporters that were selected and I got the uh, the, 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 the shadiest uh, video clip that I'm showing you here because you know it's always the sports, the sports journalists who dabble into also the entertainment. They get the shadiest angle. So he looked the shadiest uh, and on this angle where he's just kind of like, wait, 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 don't be touching me, <laughs> you know, like acting like a diva. But I think that's like what people like. Some people are saying like, oh my God, he's making all these expressions and he's like looking like he has that attitude. Look, this dude in normal, you know, situations where all these photographers are there for, you know, any kind of entertainment or red carpet event, he like stares down the camera. He eats a camera up. So I kind of think this was his attempt of like, you know, instead of like in the hard stare, like, you know, doing all this kind of stuff, like he's trying to be more, uh, this is his version of respectful and i'm glad that there's actually somebody who is truly 
truly grew up in, you know, Korea and he does not fit in with the like, oh, yes, you know, hello, welcome, you know, like even though you don't feel that way. A lot of people have trained themselves so well to be like, yes, yes, yes. And that's what a lot of these commentators were expecting from him is like being like, oh, overly polite and, you know, deferential. And I would say this is his version of it. So the reporter asked, why did you decide to voluntarily meet with the police today? And he said, well, I'm here to find out, you know, basically saying, I I don't know what is going on. They didn't call me, you know, I'm calling them saying like, you know, what's this I hear? (laughs) You know, my name is all over the place. Then uh, he was asked, do you admit to the drug use allegations? And he says, there's no truth related to my connection to violations of drug crimes. Actually, I'm here to clarify that instead of getting into it here, let me get to the interrogation room and I'll come back out. So he's trying to really minimize the time that he's going to be in the court of public opinion with these reporters and just like immediately saying like, I need to, to, to go. Whether you think that maybe, you know, he's like a little uncomfortable, who knows? Then the question was, you denied the allegation, so do you think this is an unreasonable investigation? He's like, well, we'll have to see. Now, on the one hand, you can see like his answers seem to be a little bit evasive, but on the other hand, from his perspective, I really do believe that he has to be very careful with what he says because it can so be taken out of context. And a lot of the previous allegations against uh, G Dragon leading up to this were like, oh, he seems to be a little bit odd in press interviews in the last few years. He kind of speaks a little slow and little spacey or something like that uh, compared to like when he first debuted. And I would say like, who knows? Maybe, you know, because I'm always a little suspicious, always reserve, you know, a little bit of suspicious fun. But On the other hand, when he gets to that level, and you'll see this in, I think, a lot of politicians, especially like Hillary Clinton, like they're speaking carefully because they want to make sure that if they're quoted, which often they are, that in print, it's going to not look horrible or misinterpreted. So you're kind of editing. So try that, you know, try that in your own life where you know that what you say is going to be then put into some sort of like newspaper article and you're just like, "Wait a minute, I didn't I didn't think I didn't say it that way at all." And a lot of the times it's kind of like, "Well, you didn't uh, say what your body language said or you didn't, you know, so you're they're trying to make sure the printed word, I believe, is going to be Uh, safe for them and then that sort of really does slow down how fast you speak because you're kind of like editing in your brain you know Microsoft Word in your brain and it's a lot slower next he said he was asked when's the last time you had hair coloring or hair removal and he said never like I've never done that which is obviously not true because he's always had like hair and all this kind of stuff but I think what he was trying to say there it was just kind of like a you know kind of a mental snafu that you know I'm not I've never done that for you know this situation you know why are you accusing me of that On the other hand, like I said about like, you know, having your quotes misinterpreted, if he kind of said like, oh, it was just a few months ago or I I stopped a few months ago, somebody might reuse that and misappropriate it and, you know, say like that's what he said in terms of like when was the last time maybe you used, you know. So if he always says like, like I've never done that, then that kind of clears him i that's the interpretation i get because it was kind of like a weird kind of word snafu then he was asked so you've never been to the Gangnam entertainment establishment at the heart of this case and he says we'll have to see that was like you know one of the most mm, sus answers i think from the uh in the the interview uh going into the police station however he may not even know what establishment the police are talking about. 
because he knows what's probably been in the news. He knows the accusations, but who he has to, this I think is more of like a lawyer type of thing where he has to know exactly like, you know, what address, like what are you talking about? Which place are you talking about before I give an answer to that? Then he was asked, so you have entirely no connection to the accused manager of the establishment or the doctor accused of illegally supplying drugs. And he takes like a kind of a moment and like some people might think it's like a sus moment, but he says, there is no connection. Can I go now? So it's a little bit kind of like, well, you know, he's, at least we know for sure he's being very, very careful. Especially, he hasn't even gotten to the police station yet to be questioned. Then, <laughs> the uh, reporter asks, lastly, anything you want to say for the fans? And then he's just like, you know, he's like all sorts, he's given all sorts of face. And he said, don't worry too much, and I will return after the interrogation. Can I go? Now, if you see the transcript of what he said, it looks excellent on paper. And again, that's kind of like my point is that like he his responses when you look at the video looks really shady or sus or kind of attitude or like you know there's a lot of stuff going on and you know that's why he's an entertainer because a lot of going on in a small amount of time and, but then when you see the actual transcript it looks very like good like it looks very measured and it looks very clean and innocent. I mean, a lot of these investigations, especially when you are called in by the police and you're forced to go in, then they really keep you there. The cells, they always have like a little bed for you to rest and then they give you meals. You know, they, you know, yeah, they door dash stuff to you. You spend a lot of time there and they try to like break you down. He was there voluntarily. So and it still took four hours. So what are you doing in the last, you know, in the last four hours? Like, what was all of this about? So the reporters, the same reporters, they asked him the questions outside. So now let's go to the footage of outside. It says, they asked, uh, what statement did you give to the police? Well, for now, I gave them things like my testimony that they needed for the investigation and hair samples. I cooperated with giving them everything they needed. I assisted them and answered their questions truthfully. I was saying like, you know, I'm helping out here. And I even gave my hair. I didn't have to, but I just did. Then he was asked, you stated you're innocent. Is your position the same? He's like, well, it wouldn't be right to change my position right so he's saying like what are you, you uh that would be shady you know if i suddenly said like i wasn't um so he's throwing shade at like you know these reporters and like do your job all right then he's, they, he was asked what was the outcome of the quick result drug test and he said it was negative the full test and then you know you saw like like the report like mm, okay the full test and all this was a last minute emergency situation so i hope the investigators will now accurately and quickly announce their findings you know of the full test and then it was asked you submit you said you submitted hair samples did you also turn in your smartphone and he said mm, i didn't turn it in and he said, but if we agree later, it's on the list of items they need for evidence. I told them I'd submit my phone. So taking that face value, you know, maybe he's like being careful about that. But I think actually he is coding now a message to, and this is why I think he was smirking. This is why I think he was smirking because we got news that actually his former backstabbing boss, you know, yes, Mr. YG, Young Hyun Seok, yeah just received a prison sentence for his intimidation of B.I., you know, one of the K-pop stars under his label when he was going through drug investigation years ago. But we're going to get to that. Then he said, are you, uh, he was asked, are you planning on complying with any additional summons for police investigation? And then GD said, well, if they ask me to come, I guess I'll have to come. Then he was asked, did the police present any evidence or assertions today during the interrogation? And then GD said, you mean from the police's point of view? And the reporter said, yes. And then he said, up get you. <laughs> like, they probably don't have evidence. They probably don't have any evidence. And then he said, they don't have any evidence. So that was a little bit odd, but he's basically saying that, yeah, that wasn't, 
that wasn't what came up. Then he was asked again, do you think today's interrogation was unreasonable? Then GD said, I don't think it, it was unreasonable. I don't think the police have a grudge against me. I think they're just doing their job and I'm just doing my job to assert my innocence. Anyhow, these drug crime allegations have nothing to do with me, and I came out to this interrogation to make that case clear. Though I don't think it's an unfair investigation, it'd be great if they press in a better direction and not keep insisting on proving something that's not there. You know, so basically saying like, stop trying to look for things that aren't there, you know, with me, but look over there. I wonder where he was talking about look over there. Now it's very clear. I think it's clearer now, now that a couple of days has passed. Then the question was, the interrogation lasted four hours. What was the questioning focused on? And then GD said, now this is why I think he is still signaling. He said, we had a laugh and it was over. And the reporter was like, come again? And he's like, we had a laugh and it was over. And then GD was like, oh, just joking. Honey, I don't think he was joking. But he said, I mean, I came to find out what was going on because I had no idea what the circumstances were and the police wanted to see if my testimony could help their investigation. I still don't know the details, but I hope the investigators quickly announce the results of my full drug test. So he's basically saying like, look, I'm here to help. I, I, I hope everything gets announced quickly that, you know, takes me out of this uh, drama. But he was really signaling saying that like there was really no investigation there was really no grilling we just kind of laughed and it was over and if you see in some of these korean dramas and even in news reports where like the vip people who have already kind of had their negotiations or discussions with the police they'll go to the police station after everything has been taken care of and all of the information really has been submitted and the questions have been answered you know by their people and the team then they go in and they just that's why half the time they have a bed in there so you're like okay let's just pretend you know like the way that he's joking about this the way that gd was joking was basically saying like oh well all right hey gd hey all right <laughs> all right that's it done just just chill over there for four hours if you need any food or need any drinks you know we'll take care of you and then after four hours we'll let you go you know and then you know kind of make it look like you were grilled for four hours <laughs> it's over that's kind of what what the joke that he was saying but like why did he say that kind of a joke you know why i think that was meant to signal to a particular somebody last question was many people are watching so is there anything else you want to add and he had like a big smirk about this so he said yeah a lot of people are paying attention to this case but for now it'd be great if everyone doesn't worry so much it'd be good if people just trust and wait and then you know the way that he ended that sentence was like it's over y'all i'm going peace out so then he headed back to his car and then he said he waves to some fans and the YouTubers and then he left. Now, after, you know, watching this and seeing this, I was just like, there's something else going on here. And we don't know what else is going on here for sure. It could also be like, there really is nothing else going on here. And he is quirky like that. On the other hand, I don't think in this type of situation, you go with any, with empty hands, empty pockets. I think he came pockets full of hey what do you want you know that girl over there she says that she has her blacklist honey i have a black encyclopedia and so he's probably like if you want a few you know pages off of this you want me to break some of this off i think there was something going on there especially since we have now heard he went in on monday then on wednesday korea time <laughs> Yeah, so we heard that Yang Hyun Suk, yeah, the founder and the former head of YG, who has been embroiled in a lot of these scandals with his artists, not with his artists too, just in general, just like he he he's he's a piece of work. Well, the court, the Seoul High Court, sentenced him to six months in prison, suspended for a year. So basically, it means like he doesn't have to go to a jail and then in a year or so they, they'll probably cancel it so he's probably not going to jail but he has now been sentenced now the reason that this was a little bit sus i think to me 
and the timing of it all. And I, you know, if, if perhaps GD wanted to get and one up on his boss for stealing his name, stealing his brand GD, you know, trademarking it and preventing GD from using it, then this is exactly what I would have done smirking my way into the police office on Monday and then on Wednesday saying so like, haha, you going to jail now. Because in the initial trial that the YG man had undergone, he was cleared of any kind of wrongdoing. And then this is the appeals process. And in this court, they overturned what the lower court did. And usually that doesn't happen unless there is really significant new evidence that pops up. <laughs> what kind of significant new, yeah, significant new evidence that can pop up on Monday, which probably means it didn't come in on Monday. Like GD's people probably gave the information way earlier than that and it was prepared and so then on wednesday we got the result and if you're you know wondering what that whole thing was and why it actually does relate yg's case from way back i think in like 2016 does relate to this case is that the yg guy was charged with intimidating that yg trainee girl the han so he to not testify or reverse her testimony in connection to the drug case with B.I. B.I. was a K-pop star under YG. And then this girl is just like, oh, yeah, 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 he, yeah, he does drugs and stuff like that. And then YG apparently intimidated her and said, I'm going to kill you if you don't change your testimony. And so that's what this case was about. So in the first, you know, the first round of the court in the lower court, the judge was like, mm, YG, you good, you, you OK. And then now in the appeals court, the, court, the judge was like, no, you're not good. You know, you deserve a six month prison sentence, but we'll suspend it for a year, which means like, you know, maybe you'll go in a year, but most likely we'll cancel it by then. So then I think, <laughs> you know, when, y, when G Dragon said that he's going to go to the police to help in the investigation, and then he was kind of confused about like, you know, what you're talking about, like, I think he was essentially going to be like, I'm going to be helping, I'm going to be helping my boss get the justice he deserves. <laughs> and how convenient is this? Because it's relevant because Han So He was involved in that case and Han So He is involved in this case. And I can have information, you know, that can help you in both instances. So I think GD, I don't know, you know, like what extent his actual involvement was and, you know, all this kind of stuff. But what I think he did do was a power move. And if you're wondering, like, why he's smirking or like why he seems like he has like this other dialogue going on in his head, I don't think it's because he's on something. I think it's kind of like, well, what can I say? And actually, these people don't know that there's another game board going on here. You know, like there's a VIP room and there's a VVIP, VVIP, VVVIP, and I'm playing over there and I'm trying to get this sucker, you know, off my back so that I could continue my music career. And hmm, can't really talk about that, but that's what we were doing. Hmm. <laughs> so I think there's a lot going on in his mind that he can't really talk about because he's playing a game that's you know galaxy chess you know we're just playing checkers so that's what happened when he went into the police station and what happened out of it and that's why i think he was smirking you know what do you guys think because <laughs> he was giving all sorts of good face but uh definitely this is going on and we will continue our coverage of it especially getting into that Dairy Queen business. All right, guys, we'll leave your comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.